what makes diversity key is universalism, which sounds crazy, right? But diversity doesn't work unless you have characters with universal wants and needs. Hi, it's Spade from Storyteller Therapy. This is the podcast where I give the practical, emotional, and mental support for storytellers working in careers or working on careers in film and television. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Comment below your thoughts or questions about the content. This podcast is also available on Apple iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. All right, let's get started. I'm Spade Robinson. And this is Storyteller Therapy. Hola! Hello, hello, hello. This is episode two of Storyteller Therapy, so welcome. Have a seat on the sofa, lay out, get comfortable. Today we are going to talk about diversity, and I am so stoked because I want to have a really sort of well-rounded conversation about diversity. But first, before we even jump into all of that... I do want to give you like a heads up about the structure of the show since I didn't talk about them in episode one. So here's the structure for the show and how all the shows are going to be structured. So first we're going to have a check-in. That is where I tell you what you should be watching. Let's check in. Let's catch up. What have you been watching? This is what I've been watching. This is what I think you should be watching. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And there are a lot of reasons why. It's very strategic in terms of what I'm asking you to see. Um, because I think it's just gonna make, I think it's gonna make all of us better. And that's what we're here for. Next, we're gonna have our therapy session, which is when I go into the content of the show for that particular week. Today, this week, it's on diversity. Then I'm going to go into Q&A. By the way, last episode, I, I didn't tell you, I said Facebook backslash, but I didn't tell you where. So it's www.facebook.com backslash, four slash, whichever slash it is, Story Consulting Services. And that's where, that's the parent company that owns Storyteller Therapy. That is where you can send your questions and then I can answer them and then we can all grow. And then after that, we are going to have your news and updates, stuff that is going on in terms of things that we're offering and things that I think you guys should know about that we're not offering, but somebody else is offering. So much needed information. And then after that, I'm going to give you homework. So I didn't mention that in the very first episode, the introduction, but there will be assignments at the end of every episode. Don't be scared because the homework is not always going to be sit down at a desk and do this thing. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's going to be, you know, go out into the world and see this movie or do this thing or spend time with this person because I think that is what's going to make you a better storyteller. So without further ado, let's just jump on into it. First of all, let's just check in. What have you guys been watching? Because right now it's Academy Award season, so I'm assuming you've mostly seen everything that's being nominated, everything that was shortlisted and all the hot movies. But just in case you haven't, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what my number one pick is for best picture this year. And a movie that if you have not seen, go see it. I'm gonna say that again. If you have not seen it, go see it. It's still in theaters. It may not be at the huge big theaters, but find a smaller theater in your town that may be playing more art house films. I feel like because of all the press that the film has been getting, you should be able to find it maybe at a bigger theater. But I digress. You have to go see Call Me By Your Name. If you haven't seen it already, like I don't know what you're doing with your life. I I don't know. The writing is incredible. Incredible. It's an adapted screenplay. I have not read the book. I do have a screenplay. It's incredible character development. If you download any of my electronic books, you'll see that most of my books are based on a three-act structure, although I know that every film, every story is not going to have that. It's just using the three-act structure as a way to pull you through that process to make sure you've gone through every single thing that you need to go through development-wise. This is a film that does not stick to that structure, but the character development is so strong and it clearly has been through that very rigorous process. I challenge you to both watch the movie and read the script. Um, lay down on the sofa. Let's talk about diversity. I know it's such a buzzword, and usually when we talk about diversity, at least in the industry as we've been talking about it as of late, we're usually talking about either race and or gender. I want to expand your idea of how you're thinking about diversity. It's to your detriment 
if you are not. And plus, because duh. When I think about diversity, I'm talking about racial diversity, age diversity, not to be confused with generational diversity, which are different, and I'll go more to that. But we're also talking about worldview, and we're talking about socioeconomic status, and we're talking about, you know, all the things that make us different from other people. I think worldview is huge and it's so largely overlooked when it comes to character development. So we are going to go into some of the reasons why it's not in your script and how to get it in there. So the reason why a lot of times we sort of skip over it, and I don't care what background you're from, I think largely most people sort of skip over that. A, because it doesn't cross our mind. We just don't think about it. Our worldview is such that the perspective of other people, just like it doesn't cross our mind. We don't care it's something that we sort of know exists but it's not you know within our wheelhouse of like our personal priorities we feel like we can't identify so we sort of understand so if we're in the space where we understand that there is diversity and that we should reflect that in art but that we feel like we're not in a place to identify with people who we don't sort of share the same demographics with then we feel like okay well that's not something I can do so I just won't for some people it's just too much work it's like I could really do this but I could just do this other thing that takes much less work the last one that I want to talk about something that I I think very common is that all of, and it's just like a writing issue beyond diversity. It's just like a writing problem that should not hopefully exist in your script. But it's that other characters only serve our main characters. Like that's how they're written. Screenwriting wise, we know this is a function for secondary characters and less than secondary characters. But if they are written that way, if they are imagined in that way to only serve our main characters or only serve the plot, they're one dimensional and your script just isn't as robust or dynamic as it could be because of that. What I'd like you to do is to really wrap your mind around how you can be curious about diversity in the story that you're telling. As opposed to figuring out like how I can implement it, like how can I put this in or how can I shift this? Even before that, like you're you're moving too fast, let's just pause and really wondering what would my story be like or what are the different versions of diversity that I don't have or what are versions of diversity that isn't in the, the current zeitgeist right now? How are my characters more dynamic because they bring something different to the table? How is diversity going to add to my inherent conflict, creating more subtext in what I have or creating just a richer world? Get really excited about the ways that you can use diversity. It's sort of like if you're cooking a meal, you make something and it's delicious and you make it all the time you have no real incentive to like change what you're cooking but what I want to challenge you to do is get really excited about figuring out different ingredients and spices and herbs and vegetables and like like how can I revolutionize this in in, in big ways and in small ways to take what I'm already making and make it richer my philosophy has been and is always going to be sort of the cornerstone of story consulting services is more compelling stories to reach broader audiences, which is to say, we create these things and we want as many people to view it as possible. The more dynamic your story, the more people will want to watch it. The more diversity you have and the more expansive that you are thinking about diversity, the more dynamic your project or your script or whatever, your web series or whatever you're making will be. So let's get down to how to do that. What makes diversity key is universalism, which sounds crazy, right? But diversity doesn't work unless you have characters with universal wants and needs. What that means is, regardless of the demographic your character is coming from or is exist in their worldview, the very human needs of that character and the very human wants of that character have to be things that people, regardless of what their demographics are, can understand, can internalize, can identify with. The way that I do that is I use what we call a story statement. A story statement is a sentence designed to tell what the story is about. What's interesting about the story statement is that a story statement is usually built around a main character. 
So the story statement goes like this. This is a story of blank, whoever your main character is, who wants blank, whatever it is that they want over the course of the story. Will they succeed in blank or will blank whatever the major obstacle is, prove too difficult. So that's the story of the film. This journey that they're going on, will they be successful given the obstacle that they have and the thing that they want? Will they be able to overcome the obstacle and get whatever that want is? The important thing to realize is that even though we sort of create this around our main character, every single character in your script, they are the main character in their own lives. So they all have a story statement. It's just every story, the story that you're telling may not be from that perspective. If you create a story statement for each character, especially characters from demographics that are different than you, the writer, are from, then you're creating a wealth of wants and needs and obstacles happening within your screenplay. These wants and needs bump up against the wants and needs of other characters. So you have your main character and then you have all of these other people and they all live in the world together, which essentially reflects the world that we live in. And that's what you want your script to do. Even if it's very, very, very specific story about Kendra from a small town and wherever and she lives on a farm it's a very very remote farm i don't care how singular kendra's life seems to be if you create her and a world around her that reflects the emotional state of the world that we live in you can add a lot of diversity and it be really well grounded and well written what i'd like for you to do is one other people need to be reading your scripts so if you've written four scripts in a row and you're the only person who's read them, that's a problem. Not just because you need feedback and you need a fresh set of eyes and all of those things, but for an eye towards diversity, you want people to be reading a script, especially if your main character or the story of your script is coming from like a community that you know nothing about, a community that you don't belong to. You definitely want to have people from that community read your script. Two, do the work. I am a fan of doing this work in development, even before you write a page. So if you were to take my intensive or you were to go uh, to my website and download either the two by two or the four draft intensive electronic workbooks, you would, you would have to go through that process of creating your story statement and story statements for multiple characters. But either, whether you download it or not, this is something that you can do period, make sure that your characters sort of all have that point of view. The next thing is I want you to take a, a read through your script and sort of note certain things. One thing that I come across a lot when I'm reading scripts is that white or Caucasian is the default race and then everyone else is sort of noted. So you'll have a script and you'll introduce five characters and then the sixth character you introduce is Asian American. White is not the default race. If you're going to specify race in your script, specify race in your script. If you are not going to specify race in your script, don't specify race in your script. But don't specify the people of color and then have your reader assume that everybody else is white because that is racist and weird. You don't have to write the person's name, John Smith, comma, white, comma, 35 or whatever. You can specify race in a much more interesting way, which is to mention someone's hair color, eye color, mention someone's skin color, his brown skin something, or his, you know, pale fingers something. Somebody's piercing blue eyes, they do something. Their eyes are sunken into their like red leathery skin or whatever. To find a unique way to describe them without having to be like, this person is black, this person is white, this person is neither. Also, male is not default. I run into this one less, but <laughs> too often. Just don't assume that everybody is in your demographic or everyone is in a demographic that you assume is default or normal or something. The next thing is to be surprising, especially if you have people in your script that are generally within the context of your society stereotypes. Find ways to be nuanced and surprising and additive, which means if you are making a movie or you are making a TV show, what is this piece of media adding to the library of everything that existed? If I look at your th your script or your documentary and it's not additive, something we talked a lot about when I worked at Sundance, like, hey, I know, like I get the, you know, the situation happening in the world, but what is your documentary adding to the conversation? Ask yourself that. 
If that's something that you can't answer, then you need to look back at your script and figure out ways to be surprising. And one of those ways to be surprising or additive or more nuanced or have a more complex view on it is to do that with diversity. And then the last thing is essence words. So over at Story Consulting Services, we sort of have a glossary of words that we use. Some of them are common storytelling words that you can just sort of find by Googling them anywhere. And then some of them are just terms that we've come up with and we've designed to help our clients get to the heart of their story really quickly. So one of those terms is essence terms. An essence term is a term used to describe the essence of a character. Shocker. And these are words that we use when we just, when we are describing our character for the first time. And we want them to be potent, but we also really want them to be efficient. John Smith, 30, hardened and careful. Or Sarah Hill, 70, round and soft and steady or loyal to a fault. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting at what's the essence of this person. When you use essence words to describe characters, it is so much easier to add diversity into your script because you can be talking about a kid at any age and also talking about that kid's grandmother. And it doesn't have to necessarily be how they look. It can be about the essence of who that person is and that, that essence can range through every demographic and using those terms really help you get at who a person is regardless of what their demographic is. I know it's repetitive but I really really want you to get this because it's very important and I think it'll make your story so much richer when you're making sure to again look at diversity on a wide scale and making sure to get at the essence of who people are regardless of their demographics. So in a nutshell, looking at diversity within your story is a combination, sort of the marriage between very, very, very universal wants and needs and a wide range of demographics. If you can put those two together, you're in a great space. So I hope that's clear. If you have any questions about that marriage between universal wants and needs and essences of a character and a wide range of demographic choices and how those things come together, feel free to send your questions to our Facebook page. You can send it through Messenger. You can find us if you just go to Facebook and search Story Consulting Services or you can go to Facebook slash forward slash backward slash. I never know what slash it is. Story Consulting Services. And I will be sure to answer your questions on either directly to you or for everyone on the next episode. Let's move on to news and updates. If you want to book an appointment for one-on-one consulting with your screenplay or documentary, go to www.storyconsultingservices.com dot com you can book an appointment from there it's super easy also what you'll find on our website is our electronic workbook so those are designed to take you through the development process either if you're starting from scratch i have an idea i don't really know how to get to the page i don't really know how to get started writing i just have an idea there's a program called two by two where you write two outlines and two beat sheets before the end of the program and it takes you through a an entire wealth of development processes the program is four weeks it'll take you right to the front door of your first page if you've already written the first draft of your screenplay and you need to take it dramatically forward that's what the four drafts intensive is for it is and intensive. So you can take the four draft intensive with me. We'll be on a call for two hours every week. You'll be turning in pages. It's a one-on-one bespoke experience geared directly towards your screenplay. The four by four electronic workbook is also an intense experience, but it's it's something you do on your own. You download it, you go through the process yourself. That is an eight week program. It is a lot of work, but once you are done, your screenplay is dramatically more sophisticated. Like it's dramatically just a much better script. So you can find both of those at storyconsultingservices.com. That's all I have for news and updates. Now on to your homework. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. If you have written your script or if you are in development on your screenplay, I want you to list the demographics of your characters. Yes, even your non-main characters. You list your characters, 
Then list their demographic. And remember, demographic is not just race and gender, right? It's race, it's gender, it's age, it is generation. So there are a lot of people within the same generation but have different ages, right? So it's age, right? Like how old is this person? But also like what generation do they fit in? It's their worldview, their political and social worldview, how they see the world, their socioeconomic status, geographic, demographics, like where are they in the world? What's the context of where they are in the world? So you list all of those things for your characters. Then you look over them and see how similar they are or aren't. If you have a script where everybody's exactly the same, then it's then your script is a commentary on like all of the people in this demographic. What you have to do is ask yourself, like, why is this interesting story to tell? And I challenge you to think about the fact that if there are different things that you can shift within your diversity, even if everyone's of the same race or same gender or whatever, something, but hopefully not. But if that's the case, then what can you shift within the diversity of your script and how does that help them to engage with other characters in a more meaningful or more interesting way? Once you've done that, if you can do a story statement for those characters, which we talked about what a story statement is, I will also write that story statement in the show notes so that you can see exactly what that sentence looks like so you can plug in your information for each of your characters. Once you create a story statement for your characters, then you can see the different perspective of what their wants are, what their needs are, and what their obstacles are. And sometimes those other characters are obstacles for other characters. So you see how they interact in that way. That's going to be a very transparent view of the world of the characters in your script. Once you have that, you have some decisions to make about is there enough conflict? Is there not enough conflict? Is there enough diversity? Is there not enough diversity? If you've gone through that process and you have any questions about how that's going to impact your script, again, you can send us a message. Just look us up on Facebook, Story Consulting Services, or go to facebook.com slash Story Consulting Services, and then just send us the message through Messenger. That is all I have for today. But until next time, it's been real. Thank you for listening to this episode of Storyteller Therapy and Investing in You. Comment your thoughts or questions down below. Learn more about our labs, services, and support at atlantafilmproject.com. Stick around for the next episode. See you in a few minutes.